Okay, so I'm Jan Winhall, and we're in this uh, course for the Polyvagal Institute called Treating Trauma and Addiction with the Felt Sense Polyvagal Model. And uh, it's wonderful to have Steve Porges here with us in the course. And we're talking about how the felt sense and how the autonomic nervous system um, integrates and how we work with that in terms of uh, trauma and addiction. So hello, it's wonderful to be with you, Steve. Well, hi, Jan, good to be here and uh, good to hear about how your interesting strategy of integrating uh, what appear to be two different thought processes or two different models and finding, in a sense, the home base where they were basically talking about the same things with different, with different language, with a different tool set. So anyway, thank you for engaging me and thank you for embedding polyvagal theory in your work. Oh, thank you so much. So what was, uh, you know, we, we met each other at the, the uh, United States uh, Association of Body Psychotherapies. Mm -hmm. And then I was thinking about since then, so a lot has happened. Like I wrote this book, uh, which mm -hmm. just kind of fell out of me and you became like a superstar. Well, <laughs> we, we, we don't, uh, the latter part, the book was written and the book is wonderful. <laughs> the notion of deification or superstar that is, you know, the beauty of being around a long time is that you really uh, establish what your real goals in life are. And the goals for me were the translation of ideas into practice. And so for, yeah. for me, you're one of my heroes. Oh, <laughs> well, you're certainly one of my heroes, too. And so is Jendlin. Um, and what I what I was uh, really uh, so pleased to see was the way in which you you really got in my book, The Journey mm -hmm. of, of seeing in the beginning these shifts in these women that I was working with who were incest survivors, seeing the shifts in their bodies and then getting really curious about what that was, because I knew that from listening to them, that their behaviors, their self-harming behaviors were also helping them. So there was this paradox that, you know, I, I talked about, you started with a paradox too, right? Mm -hmm. Around the vagus. And Jenlin talks about the beauty of paradox because it, point, it, it points out what we don't already know, what doesn't fit into little boxes. And this is the place where we can really get curious. It depends, of course, it's where we get curious, but it depends on the level of analysis or level of observation. Mm -hmm. When I have, I've always thought of addiction as really a valiant attempt to regulate one state. Yeah. And in a sense, this is really what your work is about. It's about yes. uh, re, re identifying that it's a state regulation strategy. So, yes, it makes them feel better, but in itself, it has damaging consequences. Yeah. But, but if we see it as this strategy to find portals in which our nervous system or our body regulates, uh, then we become, we basically, in a sense, educate those who are addicted to find more appropriate ways of regulating state and I call those more appropriate ways neural exercises and of yes. course the other one the primary one is being a mammal our primary uh, mode of neural exercise is through our social connectedness with others yes and of course in addiction we lose that right? we lose that that portal isn't there doesn't work mm -hmm. and it's something to substitute with it that actually exacerbates the initial problems that exactly. To, yeah. To feel safe in the presence of another. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I also throw in this other term. I, I kind of play with Descartes, and we're you know because uh, I feel that our culture, our society, our scientific orientation has been very much uh, uh, devalued the underlying bodily experience of being a human. And he said, you know, "Je pense donc je suis." I think, therefore, I am a cognitive-centric, cortical-centric world, and even our, our science. And so people start looking at brain imaging, and how does that relate to your feelings? Yeah. It's a lot easier and better to talk, or I would say better, a lot easier to relate to your heart beating or your sweating or, yes. or, you know, or your breathing patterns because they're, they're both a, observable to you and they're also survival-related. They're very powerful. Yeah. Um, 
But I said, what would, what would have happened if he didn't really say that? He said in French, je me sens. I feel myself, the reflexive form of the word to feel. And in English, we don't even use the word to feel oneself. We use the word to feel, and it has this great ambiguity. But if we used a reflexive form, it said, I feel myself. So yeah. if he had said, je me sens, using the reflexive form of sens, to feel, yes. thought just me, therefore I am. Yes. That's, what we're, that's what we're both talking about. Yes. If yes. I feel myself, I am. Yes. If, yes. if I think, I'm not so sure. Yes, yes. And this is what Jenlin would say, too. Yeah. It's so Jenlin, you know, he would say, how am I up here? And then he would, he would drop down inside yes. and go, and, you know, but down here is very different and he there's the felt sense right yeah, yeah yeah and the felt sense in his terminology is this interoception that occurs yes. following the neuro the neuro neuroception shifts your state yeah telling you why you shifted it yeah the interoception is what you make of those feelings the meaning the meaning yes. right and, yes. and and we have to make meaning out of feelings and often we end up with scripts yeah. I don't like yeah. you, or I'm upset, or I have too many things to do. So simply like ask a, an anxious person, what would make them feel better? They said, if I didn't have to do this, or I didn't have to do that, then if those things are done, how do they still feel? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Their, their narrative is that it's causal outside. Yes. Uh, yeah. and, and that things have been done to them. Mm -hmm. And and they haven't, in a sense, acknowledged in their felt sense yeah. that they've been reorganized to be chronically uh, threat oriented. But what's so beautiful is that when we do offer these neural exercises of going inside yeah. and touching into the felt sense in the body, the body knows the direction of healing. Yeah. You know? well, the body knows what it is to be human. I yes. mean, yeah. Yeah. and and absolutely. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's really interesting. The body knows how to heal. And again, both on a mental and also on a physical level, yeah. uh, we have taken that agency away from the body. Yes, in, we have. In our, cult, in our culture. And so like in the medical world, oh. physicians heal you or surgery heals you or drugs heal you. Yeah. As opposed to welcoming interventions in which your body is doing the healing. Yeah, you're healing yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly.